thanks Damia for the introduction. Hi everybody. Uh, I'm John Samuel and I'm um, associate professor at CPU Lyon. Officially, my title is Monsignor Scherzer. Um, uh, the topic that uh, I'm an active Wikidata contributor, and this work has been um, done as part as long. I mean, I would say from years of my work on Wikidata, something that I struggled myself in the beginning, how to do things uh, as a newcomer. And then slowly I understood, okay, these are the things that are there that could help us to do this. So this is the idea. And my the talk is more about multilinguality. Like you have all these languages on Wikidata and how could you uh, ensure that um, the data in your language, uh, sorry, the properties are translated in your languages. Uh, what I would uh, do in the beginning is I will give an introduction to this, uh, the topic. Uh, I will present the tool called uh, WDProp, which is to uh, do analysis on Wikidata properties. Then I will also present a work where uh, we are going to do uh, some sort of, we are, I present some sort of co cursor analysis on the pro property translation, how the data were collected and what was of interest to this, uh, this work, um, uh, and then uh, conclusion and future works. Um, uh, so I will also share one of the links. So if you want to test things with me, uh, okay. I have a problem. Where can I see the chat? Uh, okay. How can I find the chat? Is it? You, sh you should have a button uh, discuss maybe on the bottom of the. No, mm. for me it's in French, so it's converse. But... Uh, no, no, c'est pour moi aussi c'est en français. Je peux voir, mais je vois pas. Converse. Je vois participants. Converse. Uh, non, je vois pas converse. Je vois uh, vidéo. Je vois. Uh, okay. Maybe it's uh, dots because sometimes. Oh, okay, dot. Yes, discussion. Sorry, thank you. Okay. So here is the link. Uh, if you, um, if you can, I, I mean, I have put the link so that as we go on the each of uh, each step, we could see uh, each of these links and discuss about uh, what are the things that are present. So, this is a reference that we can discuss. For, don't hesitate to uh, stop me, and if you have questions, uh, please uh, ask. You can uh, open the mic and close it, Christian. So, please do not hesitate. About asking question so let's start with the uh, the, the work the, um, so if i do not know how many of people here know about wikidata can can anybody uh, if people have already heard about it if there is anybody who has not heard about it okay in the discussions as well i think so i will yes oh okay a little so i think we i i will start explaining about wikidata so wikidata is a is a sister uh, wikimedia project uh okay sister wikipedia project which was started in 2012 and it's a free open linked structured collaborative and multilingual knowledge base and, and the goal of my talk today is about multi multilinguality that means how uh, knowledge can be represented in multiple languages on Wikidata. So what has changed from Wikipedia to Wikidata? So if you take into consideration Wikipedia, for example, they are situated on multiple subdomains. So what I mean by multiple subdomains is you have en.wikipedia, you have got fr.wikipedia for French, la French language, es.wikipedia for Spanish language, etc. So every subdomain caters to the needs of the language community, uh, the individual language communities. But what has happened with the Wikidata, you have got all these sites, all this uh, different knowledge, they are going to be on one particular site, a single domain uh, multilingual website. What I mean here is, when uh, and I say single domain, is that you have got www.wikidata.org, which can show you information in English, French, Spanish, or any other supported languages. So this is very interesting because what 
uh, what we saw previously on Wikipedia, you may have different uh, um, articles in, uh, or different of different length in different language Wikipedia. But in case of Wikidata, you have got one single domain uh, website, and you could use the same the same information can be seen in different languages. This is very very interesting. And so this is a very big change all as well from this from the from wikipedia to uh wikidata but the thing is that wikidata is more like a knowledge base a store for facts so it's not about opinions that we can we may see or uh, in in wikipedia uh it's more about facts so you have uh, the the on you know about the locations of a museum you may know about uh, authors of books etc so it's more about facts that are present uh, people have studied uh, for example the uh, collaborative um, ontology development on wikidata they have found that many people come together they may not be from um, the same domain they may be from different domains but they come together uh, because they like this topic they want to document this topic, a particular topic like museums or books or persons or towns, villages, etc. So they decide, so they come together to develop uh, a way to describe things on Wikidata. So in case of Wikidata, you have got properties. For example, if you want to say a particular town is situated in this country, a particular town has these co coordinates, so you may need to have some sort of property. These properties, for example, in the case that I just said, uh, we have got country, we have got geographical coordinates, etc. But these properties cannot be just created. People cannot go and uh, create a random property on Wikidata. And that's why this topic is interesting because there's a procedure, there's a consensus has to be built. People have to discuss about a property. You may suggest a property and then people discuss with uh, about this property they, they look at the prop existing properties and they decide okay this can for this there is no need uh, of a new property you could use uh, the existing property uh, as a b c uh, p one two three whatever and you uh, so we don't need to have uh, this property but there could be cases where you may decide to have this a new property so there's a voting we see things how many people have voted uh, giving support for this property and they will and finally if there's a majority of support we create the property in this talk what i am um, interested is looking at the aspects of the creation and translation so once the property has been created there would be some initial translation and then the community the different communities decide to translate and this is a very interesting part because uh, we need to understand how things are done, how many properties have been translated, which properties have uh, got in, uh, uh, have got a lot of interest in language communities, except these things are, uh, have to be studied. And that's why uh, what I'm going to focus on is about the property creation and translation. So once your property has been created, you have, well, you can use it. So as I said, if you have a town, you describe a town, and you are at the country or you're at the geographical coordinates. So this is about using. This is an interesting aspect. It's called a property deletion. So you cannot, just like on Wikipedia, you may have articles that could be deleted. So people could propose uh, some properties to be deleted. And later in this uh, workshop, we, we can see uh, together that some of these property, how some of these properties have been deleted and leaving holes in between the numbers and this is very interesting so so you cannot guarantee that a property has been that has been created will stay on forever people could suggest better properties people could come up with better uh, solutions suggestions so that's one possibility so properties could be deleted these are the things that we may so what are properties so what i did i hear uh, i took a uh, city uh, in france avignon um, so this city has got, uh, we have, so I'm taking this city uh, on Wikidata, I've taken this data, so I've focused on some uh, information. For example, here you see on the left-hand side, official name, the native label, the country, the capital of. Uh, so these are called the properties. So you have official name Avignon in French, uh, official name Avignon in Occitan. Uh, I do not know if I pronounce it correctly, but you could have these multiple values. So you could have, you have the native label, you have the country which we have just discussed, sorry, it's in France, 
the capital officer if, if in the past we, if we have any information about Avenue, we could add it here. So let, let us focus on this side. So we are not going to focus in this talk, we are not going to focus on this part because this is uh, this comes along with the properties. Once you understand how what are properties, you could easily uh, ab be able to add this information uh, on the right hand side. So our, our focus is on the left hand side. Uh, that's called the prop. They are called the properties. So let's take the first one, which is uh, country. Now, if you see country, we have got an identifier. We have got a number. As as we have discussed, it's a single. Uh, it's a unique identifier. We say it's called wikidata.org slash wiki property p17. And in this, on this, in this particular screenshot, what we see is that we have got uh, the languages, the different languages. Here, in particular, we are focusing on four languages like English, French, Spanish, and German. We for uh, and we see that because in my uh, on my uh, browser, English was uh, um, enabled by default. I could see that information in English, and I took the screenshot. Uh, so you see country coming up here, so country and P17. But if you change the language, we will see uh, later how can we, how we can change the language. We could see this uh, information in the local languages, for example, in a uh, is a stat in, in, in German. We also have description. So for example, uh, country, if you want to know what exactly is country, okay, this is quite, uh, maybe this is quite easy to understand, but Sometimes some properties may need uh, descriptions and here for every language you have got a small description. So this is sovereign state of this item, don't use on this human because you have another property called uh, citizen, citizenship or nationality of the person that could be used. So that's why for towns or, towns or places we use this particular property P7, but for humans we do not. So that's what, so they have added one particular instruction in the description. So let's say uh, what more things can be uh, uh, can be seen. So one another example that I want to give here is the official data because this is very popular uh, property. Uh, you have uh, different, uh, like for example, Wikidata is a property and it has a big official website. Your town may have an official website. Uh, the local prefectures may have official websites. So these need to be added. So for this, we have a special property P856. Uh, which is uh, in English uh, as written as official language. So I have just, uh, I have not enabled uh, in more languages. I just want to have put the information in English language. What I want to show here is the data type here. So here, the one data type that we see here is a URL. As you know, it's a URL, it's a link uh, because it is www or HTTPS, etc. So you have got a URL to describe this. Uh, particular website so you could add you could have this information called the data type we have this is important because we will see in the demonstration later uh, what why do we need to know about the data types especially if you want to uh, do a hackathon or something and you want to translate all the urls uh, in your local language why not this will be a very interesting uh, way to find things another example that i would like to give here is the property p31 okay so you could say paris is a city is a or paris is a capital city is a is a relationship so you have paris and you have got a city now you want to join this you want to link this relationship so for this we have got a very interesting property called instance of but if you talk to people generally people may not understand the word instance of which is very 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 technical i feel like very too much of uh, a computer science world uh, i i don't find it like very it cannot be understood by a lot of people but for this purpose we have got, uh, that's why i have shown this one this particular uh, this figure we ha also have another uh, uh, column here which is called also known as so also known as is uh, in in this case instance of could also be called as is a is and has class is a particular etc so the advantage is that if if you want to type something you could uh, type say okay is a do um, tell me that the property number for is a you can find it so i would like to show you why it is interesting because if you want to do some sort of query let's say i want to do some museums 
So I could do uh, my museums. Uh, I could say I want museums. Museum. And I would say WDT. And I do not know what I should write. Uh, I want to get all the museums. Uh, I do not know how to do. So I could say WDT is instance of, for example. And you see, if you don't have to remember the number, it's in, uh, in my in my case, it's in, enabled in French. So you see, you see that it's written in Nature du Lelemo, Peyton. So I could just search it and say WD Museum. Now I, in that case, again, I don't want to remember the number. I got this number, means I, I have, uh, for information, I've uh, I pressed on the keys, control and space to get, uh, to auto-complete my, I have done that, and then I would say limit 10. So now I've got different museums. As, as a result, I could go one of the museums, and you will I will show you why we got that answer. So in this case, I got Munan, Mundanium, and I got the answer Q41 because there is a P31 and there is a museum. So that's why they go, gave me this result as answer. But what I want to say is that if it's it has been translated if in this case i i wrote in 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 english but if you write it in french nature the element it has helped me to find this answer. so the translation of property is very very important so if you want to do some sort of hackathon in in your uh, for a local language communities and you want to do some sort of interesting queries to do, give me all schools give me all uh, parks give me all things it's very easy like uh, for example when i work with students I can, these students cannot remember all these numbers. So what I would like to, uh, I show them is that you could type some of the letters, like country, and then you say control space, and this auto completed, and you get that. Thing. So you could also write pay for example, and you get that. Let's show. I'll show you that. You can try with me, and if you want, um, and I got it P17. And if I type in country in English, for example. Uh, Okay, I got it. I think pays uh, it was pays in, in Spanish, so I got it again. It's uh, as it has uh, auto completed. So this is very interesting. So this is why uh, the translation of property is very important, and that is why we are going to focus on this, uh, in, uh, on the properties in this talk. So let me start with uh, talking about property. So as I said, properties cannot be just created. Somebody cannot just go and. Uh, create a property on Wiki, uh, Wikidata, there's a procedure. So if you want to create a property, you need to understand uh, the, the domain or to which it belongs. For example, if it belongs to sports, you have a dedicated place where you could propose property. So here you see there are 19 pro properties that have been proposed by community members uh, saying that we need this property to describe some, something important about sports. If it's about book or uh, or, or maybe uh, some other creative or novels, uh, etc., you could also go to creative work and propose a property. So as I said, in this, when you propose a property, it's not just uh, uh, it, no, it will not be just created. There will be a procedure. There will be a discussion, and this discussion uh, is um, helps you is is used to decide whether or not we will create uh, the property will be created. So let's put up a. Uh, Photo. Let's put up a diagram to explain what happens when you propose properties. So if you decided that uh, uh, you have got an institution, that institution has got some data which can be publicly accessed uh, and they have got persistent identifier. What I mean by persistent identifiers is that the identify the URL for this particular data never changes, it remains fixed. For example, that's one example or you have got something interesting which cannot be represented in uh, Wikidata, so you propose something. So in that case, the procedure is you propose it. You may be a bilingual, you may be a multilingual, so you may come up with multiple translation. For example, for country, you would have said country, pay in, uh, in, in French, or pay in, in Spanish, et cetera. So that is the first proposition. And then we have got a discussion that people will discuss about it. And then there will be a voting procedure. If the voting, uh, if it's successful, there is more, there are a lot of support. You, the property will be created by the property creator. Uh, some of the translation which were proposed here will be used by the property creator to create this property. This will be translated by 
subsequently in a later point of time, people will see this property and translate them and people will go to use them. And as I said before, properties have no permanent, <laughs> it's not like it will remain forever. Properties can, we can also propose properties to be deleted. Uh, okay, of course we cannot, I mean, I do not think that one day we will ask uh, the properties like countries or official website to be deleted, but there could be new properties that we found that uh, it's not so interesting or not so relevant, or there are some issues. We decide to we decide to delete. So we have to propose. And again, the procedure, if you see the red uh, red arrows, it goes to the discussion stage, there's a voting, and there's a stage which called deprecation because there could be case where a lot of people are already using, a lot of entities are using this property. And in that case, we cannot uh, go on using it. So we have to mark something like deprecation so that in the meantime, before it's completely deleted, people. Uh, it's marked like deprecate so that people do not use it for but for the existing properties uh, we want to, um, that they uh, uh, they slowly move on to some new properties or they are totally removed so this is a state that's deprecated sometimes you put into uh, within the brackets deprecate deprecated or for deprecation etc and then the finally the property is deleted so this is the overall uh, idea of property how things work on property uh, for the property creation but in this talk as i said we are mostly interested about the existing translation we're interested about uh, its creation uh, and the translation step that are interested. so other steps are, I, um, it's important to know them but we our focus will be mostly on translation so why this is important why do we need to have uh, uh, this uh, translation as you can see in this particular uh, image you have got uh, a property p31 very popular very important which is as i said is a so you have to describe it there are so many languages which have got no descriptions for example northern frisian northern Fris uh, western frisian irish galician uh, uh, galician sorry uh, has got no translation uh, has got no description here this swiss german has got no descriptions then you have Hausa, Hatha, Chinese has got, uh, got no description. Then we have Odia, Punjabi, Pampanga, uh, Pika having got, uh, have, it, have it no uh, descriptions and pastorals are also with no description. But what you see here is that they have got the labels, so it's okay, people could use them, they could understand them. But if they, if they, if it's a complex property, something that they may have got some confusion, they have no idea about what these properties are. So people cannot get this. So this is very, very important that the properties are uh, translated. So let us see. I I I, I, rather, I like I like to have uh, like to do the presentation. So I say let's start with uh, Wikidata as example. So let's say it's Wikidata. You have got uh, Wikidata uh, as an entry. So I search on the left hand side. Uh, I got Wikidata. Uh, I you see the number Q three zero one three. And you have got the information instance of, part of, logo, image, etc. Okay. Now, what happens if I change the language? I would say use lang. I would use question mark, use lang French. So let us see what happens. So you see my all the data is now in French. So it you see it's in 2013, nature de l'element, uh, partie du, image du logo type, uh, uh, image de, de fondation ou de création. So, so you have got all this data in the local languages. So this is interesting. But what if my data, if I ask my data to be in the first language code called AA? So it's an AFR, it's language AFR, which has got very less translation. So if you see this language, nothing, nothing has been translated. We see everything in English. We don't see anything in the local languages. So this is problematic because the person who speaks, who doesn't, if the person doesn't speak English and wants to see the information in the local language, they do not even understand this portion. So forget about this because that's another point. But this at least they do not understand what we are talking about, what type of data are present. So this is uh, very problematic. So, the, um, so it's important to have data, uh, the properties to be translated. So that's why we, I put this example here. Wikidata and AFR, you have see, got everything in English and not in the local language AFR, uh, like in case of French or Spanish. 
So another interesting thing, you could also have cases where you have got a alias, but no description and no label. So here, what I've shown you is Riffia. In Riffia, what you see in the ca in case of alias, they have got a mathematical symbol epsilon, which it belongs to. So it's okay. So they that is there, but it is not. There is no uh, label uh, to uh, explain instance of. Remember, this is a very popular, uh, very important property, and we have got no label for this particular language. So this is very problematic. This we have to discuss. So WD prop when uh, uh, was created, so this particular tool was created. It is here. Uh, it was created to uh, to understand this these aspects. So we st uh, when property uh, when you create properties, people have studied about its collaborative nature. People have also studied about its multilingual nature. Uh, and we also know that Wikidata is being used by multiple domains. You have got museums, uh, GLAMs, etc., who are using Wikidata. Uh, it's nice, it's very interesting. But the question that uh, um, I was trying uh, to pose is Is it possible to achieve a truly multilingual experience? That means a user, like in, I, I, I don't know if you are on social media, they have got different languages uh, and you can switch you could switch your language and you could see the menus translated in your local language uh, but the whole procedure the whole thing that is happening on wikidata can it can it uh, can we have a truly multilingual experience this was a question that uh, that uh, um, i was posing a couple of years before and this was the reason this whole tool was uh, uh, developed Another is interesting aspects about properties, why they are properties. We will see later, there are not so many properties. Somebody gave a talk uh, sometime before, uh, just in the afternoon. They said there are 100 million items. Yes, correct. But there are not 100 million properties. There are only around 9,000 properties. So uh, they are very less in number. So they could be translated. People could organize a high uh, translating the props. So, so they're very interesting. And they are not influenced by bots. Why? What do you mean by bots? Uh, so, for example, you, you know that something is a museum. So you could ask, add a description in your local language. You could write a bot saying, "Give me all the museums." Like what we says, did a uh, little uh, some time back. We searched query. We uh, go to the description and we write a bot, write an automatic code, and we put for all these uh, <laughs> items. Uh, museum, 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 or museum, 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 etc. So this is possible, but in case of properties, you cannot do such type of translation. It has to be understood by a human before being uh, it before being translated. So people, uh, some human needs to understand what ex how exactly uh, these properties have been created. So this is very important uh, aspect of properties, and that is why it make uh, the topics interesting. Uh, so the goal is to understand the Wikidata property proposal, various things that are present uh, during this discussion, what are the available templates, and last but not the least, providing real-time statistics to multilingual contributors. This is important because we want to test, uh, uh, we want to give um, real-time statistics to contributors. So uh, some time back, there was a person who talked about Wikipron in, the, in the, just uh, two sessions before i think uh, the person said that uh, we have got a lot of resource works where some data have been published and one and since the code is not available people do not know what has changed people do not have re real time information uh, so uh, so what they had proposed the previous talk they have proposed by by annual uh, statistics so this is one way so as to uh, we ensure that people get real information about what has changed during this time. So what WD Prop was doing is if any time, at any point of time, you want to know any information, you will get it. This is the idea of WD This is what we uh, want to give. And it was, I think I would say it was too ambitious. And the thing was to, uh, saying towards everything I would say uh, about Wikidata properties. So you have got properties, uh, the properties may have labels, the properties may have aliases, these have description. If you want to say a property is completely uh, completely translated, it means that you have got all the labels translated, you have got all the aliases translated, and you've got all the descriptions translated in all the supported language. That means the goal should be towards this.
uh, and if you want to focus just on your language, you could also say the goal is that all properties are translated in my language, the labels, the descriptions, and the aliases. So this is what we want to do. So let us start with uh, the languages. So if you go to wdprop, that's wdprop.toolforge.org, you can also find uh, uh, the link which I shared. So if you click on this website, you also have the source code if you want to go to the source code, you could check the source code. Uh, let's start with the basic question. How many languages are supported by Wikidata? People, what answer you could give about how many the support, support of languages? So you could have, uh, I do not know how many languages uh, at this point of time, because uh, yesterday we had a talk about uh, incubation. We, today afternoon also we had talk about new uh, dictionaries that were added. We do not know how many languages are added uh, in on Wikipedia. This is the first question. So let us start with the first question. We say um, um, uh, uh, we have got, uh, I, uh, I clicked on languages and we get the answer. The answer is 319 languages are there at this point in time on Wikidata. And if you want to verify that, you could also, uh, there is the problem with, the interface is that you cannot. Uh, anybody has idea how to remove the? Okay, I will better change my screen and go to. Yes, this is what I want to do, and I will do that. I'm sorry, but this is the problem. Uh, so here you see in this, uh, I, I ran a query if you want to verify how I got the information. As I said, it's important that people could also verify uh, things that you could uh, run this query. You can directly go to the um, query interface and you could uh, uh, um, check, verify whether this is tr really true, whether the data is correctly giving me, uh, it's giving me the correct answer. So the answer here is we have got 390 languages. So that is interesting. So we got to know about languages. There are 390 languages. So these things are coming from, from the real time. The WG prop gives you real time statuses. You could support, know the supported languages, know the number of properties, know the number of data types classes, how many data types are there. Are there just URLs? Are there just links? Or are there just items? Uh, how many, uh, how many uh, can I compare French translation and English translation? Can I compare French, English, and Spanish translation or other, other groups of languages? How can I know, uh, how can I compare the, perf not the performance, but the, the coverage of translation for these languages? And then, as I said, there you have the possibility to verify, you have the possibility to look, look at these items uh, from the uh, Wikidata query that are present. And they are based on uh, basic vector. This is very important. As I said, uh, this whole thing it can be run on, can be just downloaded. People could, they do not need to go to the website. They can also just download the source code click on the website, uh, sorry, click on the index.html and they are on their own machine. They can change the colors. I know I've chosen blue color, but people could uh, change the color in the way they want and they could run on their whole, in their, on their machine uh, without installing anything. So just download. So this was, very, this also was very important that this should be very simple. Anybody can download it and run these things. So HTML, JavaScript, and CSS. We'll just close the first and then. Let us now take on to the uh, next thing. So the first thing that we saw is the language. Let us click on the first language. So let's start with the first language, which is Afar, which we already saw. So in this case of Afar, if you see Afar here, what you see is that, uh, how do you... in case of Afar, you, what you see is that uh, it's bringing data. It is trying to, tell me how many uh, labels need to be translated. So it says total 8,914 labels need to be translated. So that is uh, uh, interesting. So it's like almost uh, none of them have been translated. Uh, how many uh, descriptions need translation? Uh, okay, 8,917. How many properties with no aliases? Uh, 8,916. So let us try with French. 
in case of French. So if you see in case of French, you have got a very less, so you have, it's quite in, impressive, like you just have got uh, 526 properties that needs to be translated and all of the remaining have been translated. So this is interesting there, but in case of description, there are 2,999 properties that need to be translated and with no aliases, okay, this is not a big problem, but still there are 4,373 properties with, with help of no aliases. So let us try to compare with Spanish. So I think, let's see what are the numbers for Spanish. Uh, you, you, if you want, you can also test with uh, the, any other language that you uh, want to test. You can just change the language equals to your language. So Spanish uh, compared to French, it's got a lot of properties that need to be translated. So it's like 4,117 properties that need to be translated. And then 5,788, and then 6,118 properties with just but no alias. Okay, let us uh, take uh, English. So uh, you'll, be, you'll be surprised to see the results. So here you see that there are no properties that need to, uh, needs to be translated. All the properties have been translated. So there is zero property that needs translated. Only 86 properties needs to, uh, to be translated for the descriptions part. Of course, for the aliases, as I said, some properties may need aliases, others may not need. So it's not a big deal. Could prof probably refer to these two as, as a reference. But in case of detailed analysis, you could also uh, work on aliases mm -hmm. if you want to. Yes, sorry. Excuse me, John, just a, a small question. <clears throat> what does it mean that the property uh, needs translation from English? Everything comes from English, is that correct? or? Yes, pro probably, yes. But sometimes uh, I've, I've also uh, observed that uh, French language Wikipedia, oh, sorry, French Wikidata contributors propose their properties in French. So sometimes, for example, for the local identifier, which is very, very specific to French language, we could have cases where the property initially is created in French and then later in English. So you it's can have mandatory to have an English description uh, with a French description, or I would say yes. <laughs> but I have also seen cases where uh, it's only uh, was initially proposed in French and some other people have come and added other kinds of things. Okay, thank you. Thank, thank you. Uh, it's a very interesting, it's a very nice question because it's important. It's a very important part of the property proposal. It's nice. Thank you. Uh, yes, so this is what I was trying to uh, show in these slides about English, about English descriptions and English aliases. Now the question that you may ask is how many properties are there? Why are you, I, you I said in the beginning around 9,000. Let's get the real time statistics. So I click on properties. So here I am and you could see it is 8917. Then you will say, okay, on your slides it's written 8905. Yes, you are right. Because I took this, uh, when I prepared my slides a couple of days before, I wanted to get the real time statistics. And the statistic at, on that day was 8905. So here you get the latest statistic. And right now we have got 8,917 properties. And I also talked about the properties that have been deleted. So if you see here, P1, P2, some numbers are missing. So what I did to show, uh, okay, there are properties that could be deleted. So if you want to so show a demo to somebody, you could say, yes, there are properties that get deleted. So here from P1 to P5, all those properties have been deleted. Here on this properties have been deleted. Uh, so this is not, it is quite normal. You could have properties that have been, so, so if you consider all the properties so far, there were P9631. So the latest number is P9631, uh, but that actual number of properties is 8917. So all, of the, all the remaining have been deleted. So this is uh, quite interesting. So one of the during one of the Wikidata hackathon, some people suggested uh, we want to do some sort of hackathon, but we would like to know uh, what are the top properties on Wikidata. We already saw a couple of them: country, official website, instance of. But Wikidata also maintains a, pro a list. It is here at this top hundred properties. So uh, I've taken you. I have made use of this. To, when you click on properties, you could also take a look at these properties. These are very well used properties on the data. As I said, uh, like 
country of citizenship. Country, country of citizenship is used on humans because we have got nationality. Instance of author of a book, constellation, education, et etc. Et you could take a look at this a property, a popular property. Uh, please do not hesitate. It is here. Uh, the pro languages is here. The properties is here, etc. Okay, so now let us uh, look at an individual property. So what happens if I click on one of the properties? So let us take a prop very popular property called official website. So I would say official website. This is a very proper popular one because we have to specify the official website of every property. So here, if you come on this particular link, you can test other possible numbers here if you want to test. You have got the property details. We will come on this. These are some advanced features. This is very interesting. We will look at them at a later point of time. Um, here, what I want to say show is that if you have a, uh, want to, uh, you have created a new property and you want to improve the coverage in different languages, you could take a look at, you could change the number, you could add the property that you have created and see the latest statistics. So you could say this label, this particular property, the official label, is has got no translation into 103 languages. Remember, in the beginning, we have got 310 languages. Yes, out of 310 languages, 203 languages have got no description for one of the popular pop properties on Wikidata. So 203 languages have got no, uh, no labels. 255 languages have got no description. This is what is uh, shown here. You can click on these languages to get the statistics, uh, what we have already seen. And 249 languages have got no aliases for the property P856. So you could test this. You could add uh, uh, more details. You could also take a look at uh, what has already been translated. So you see there are 138 languages that have got the labels. They have got 74 languages which have got the descriptions and there are 84 lang languages which have got the aliases. So this is a, this link could be used to get all types of information from, this, from a single URL. This is what I have explained here. If you want to come back and you could refer to these slides to see what have we have covered. Next question is about the data types. Uh, in the beginning, we saw uh, an example of uh, instance of instance of. We said that Paris is linked to France, so you could link Paris and France. So they are items. So sort of they have got identity, wiki data item. But there could be other data types like URL that we have seen. There could be string. There could be photographs. So you have got photographs on comments with media comments. That's also possible. So you have got only seventeen data types. And you could also find out which are those uh, uh, properties which belong to these data types. So for example, what I would like to say, go here is click on data types. I have got all these uh, things. Maybe I would show you one of them like uh, uh, Lexi, which is for the lexicographical data. Let us click on one of the properties and I go to the, this particular property. This is uh, Sandbox Lexi. So, you, you know, as you see, sandbox lexing, and here the data type is lexing. So, this is one way to check. Now, uh, let us try some other properties. Uh, in this case, like, let us say time. What is about time? So, how many properties do we have got? 56 properties. Let us check 570. Now, 570, if you go, uh, it's about date of death, the 570, and you have got the data type is point in time. So we have got, so this is the way you could find out the property. So this is interesting, for example, if you want to do a editathon or a, uh, or a hackathon on this uh, aspects, you could say, okay, let's organize a hackathon and let's ensure that we translate uh, all these properties belonging to time in our local language. So that's one way to see this. Okay, so for Lexemes, we have got 14 properties. Uh, interestingly, if you want to see uh, external identifier, which are very, very large, you have the lots of uh, properties which are linked to external database. For example, Bibliothèque Nationale de France, BNF, Library of Congress, uh, you have got OCLC or, um, okay, Instagram username, 
academia. Yeah, yeah. So you have got a lot of external identifier which has been linked to uh, these properties. So this could be also used. So there are a lot of them. If you want, like social media URLs are often linked with the belong to the external identifier. Okay. Now the question that uh, one of the questions that we want to ask is how do i decide if i'm a newcomer how do i uh, decide which property should i use now people have been working on it i said as i said when i started working on making data it was a big question for me i do not i did not know how to describe the software i did not know how to describe the programming language etc it was a big a big problem for me so uh, at this point of time what we uh I mean, this is not just my problem. There are many uh, contributors which uh, have this problem. So there's something that people have suggested. They have created property classes. So what I am going to show you here is, sorry, uh, let's search for lighthouse. For example, if you want to describe a lighthouse, how do I describe a lighthouse? So here I have got first lighthouse and here another one. So let's click on the first one. So if I want to describe a light, uh, I need the coordinate location where exactly it is located, the country of this lighthouse, the height, the focal height, the heritage des des designation, because some lighthouses are uh, very uh, old and they, uh, they belong to the heritage of national heritage. Uh, so they have got a designation. They, you need to have an image. You need to specify on what date has been created. Then you have got light characters, etc. So you have got all this information. So this is one way people could find out uh, if you have a got a doubt about how to do things. Search for museums, for example, museums. So you have got Wikidata a property for authority control for museums. You could find it. So or you could have museums. People have described museums. So let's do one more example for lighthouse. You could do, uh, I mean, if you have uh, using it, please try uh, something which you want to use. Uh, you could also help to improve these classes. So here is another one. Here, what people, if you see this one, this is mostly about identify. All of these have ID, 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 ID at the end. So this is about identify. So these are a lot of databases uh, which have the, uh, sorry, for example, Canada, Dan uh, Denmark, Finland. Uh, have or Italy have got lighthouses and they have got an identifier for these lighthouses. So people have grouped all these properties. So if you have want to uh, look at these lighthouses, you can also make use of these these things to find out the relevant uh, properties for your uh, for the lighthouse in your country. Okay, now let us con continue. Uh, this is now I come back to uh, something that is important is uh, is to know if how 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 many of these have been translated. So let us say, uh, let us go back to Lighthouse. So you have seen there are 15 properties. You can verify those 15 properties, how we obtain these 15 properties. But the thing is, if you want to describe a lighthouse, you want to ensure that these lighthouses have been translated in all the lines. So you have got these 15 properties. And for these 15 properties, we have also got the statistics here. So here you see NB, NK, uh, Ukrainian, English, uh, Arabic. They have got all those uh, labels, these 15 labels uh, in their local languages. But there are languages which, have got not, uh, which do not have all the translations. So some of these have been here. So you could also get this type of information for a limited set of properties. So it's not about the entire set of properties, but just a property class, and you want to know how many of these have been translated. So this is another interesting part when you want to, uh, especially when you organize a, a GLAM meeting or something, and you want to improve the language coverage, you could say, okay, let's focus on a class and let us find out the number of translation labels in, in for this particular that could be a glam related class so that's one possibility um another another aspect of this is about references uh, this is a minor thing but it's also uh, important sometimes because some uh, some scientists or some researchers want to know whether uh, properties uh, have some external uh, equivalents 
So one thing you could have like people add references saying that this property is interesting. So we need to have some references. It's just like we got add references, say Paris is the capital of France. So you have got a reference for that. You could also add references for justifying your property. So, you, so if you take a look at this slide, uh, here you see that you have got uh, provenance and for the provenance, you have got the properties uh, with references. So not all the properties have got uh, references. There are only, uh, uh, we will see, it takes some time. They have got 4,198 properties which have got references. And then you have got uh, uh, properties which have got the equivalent uh, properties. For example, what I'm saying by equivalent is like, for example, P10 is video. Now, if you go down, they have got another uh, website called schema.org, which is one of the popular uh, website for describing video. So they say there's an equivalent property called video on schema.org. So you could have this type of things. You could so it's not just on Wikidata. There are it's 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 something like oh there is a there is it's there. There are, there are other sources which is which are also describing such properties, so which are also using this. So this is like sort of confirmation of using a particular property. So this is interesting. If you, if you are interested in studying these things, you could also take a look at these type of properties. Okay, now if if that is uh, that is clear, let us take, so we can also have uh, something that uh, we didn't do at this point. Let's take coordinate location. So let us take provenance information. So in this case, we have focused on one particular property. So it has got this particular property has got 49 statements and only one of the statement has got uh, a reference. So uh, this is this is something that uh, that could be used to understand about uh, a particular property. In this case, it is about uh, P625 is about coordinate location. So this type of studies can be done uh, if you want uh, in, your, in your cases. Okay, now I come back to the property discussion uh, topic, which is uh, uh, which is really important uh, because, uh, as I said, uh, the question for WDG Prof was: Are we achieving a fully multilingual experience? This is uh, the question that we. Uh, and so that we, so it means and uh, we start with a proposition and we put for voting and when you put for voting you add saying i support i do not support i oppose i have a comment i stay neutral uh, so this template like we add normally use within the parentheses uh, support or two parentheses for saying it's support or within the parentheses uh, oppose etc so you have got uh, only 40 54 languages which which has got this uh, translated so it means uh, if you check the support template if and you check the french version it has been translated to poor so it is there the french version is there so you you can see that it has been translated so people if french version person wants to a uh, french speaking person wants to test uh, the discussion page they could see that information in the french language so this is very important, but remember our initial discussion. We had 314, 10 languages, and out of them, we have only 54 languages which have translated the word support for creating properties. Uh, and this is one of the property discussion page. Let us, uh, I would like to show you this prop the property page. So let us say property, I would say paradigm. You, you can, anybody can uh, find this. So I said property paradigm. I went there. I clicked on the discussion page. So I clicked here. So this is the discussion page, which you see. So this property has been created. It's 3966. You see the people who have supported. You, have see, you also see the people who have opposed, etc. So now let me change my language. And I put use lang, uh, lang, equals French. And now what happens? So you see, okay, let's forget for the timing what what people wrote, but anything, everything else, like here you see it's French, poor, poor, contre, uh, contre, poor. So this information is available to a French reader, even though the person may not 
um, uh, be able, I mean, I mean who, if the person, if they do not speak English, they are at least able to account, they are able to verify that, yes, one, two, three, four, five, six people have supported this particular property. So this is very important to have such uh, discussions, just very important to have these templates translated into local. So this is what I am showing here. And if you, as I said, uh, to end, I think it was Damien who asked this question. Uh, uh, in this case, for paradigm, if you see people have, when they propose this paradigm, they have translated in English, uh, Portuguese in from Brazil, uh, Russian, uh, I, I do not know this language, uh, and this is Ukrainian. So you have got initial translation for these languages. So when uh, this property is created, they will be created in these languages. So here you see the, the French language is not present in the first uh, level of creation they have it has it has been proposed but the initial translations phase have only five of these languages that will be that, that will be created during the creation stage this is a very important so you also see people who have translated the description here so you could verify you can verify when if you check the source code of this uh, particular paradigm same case with oppose so it's only 50 language neutral if i want to stay neutral i do not want to give a support or support or oppose i can stay neutral i can also give a comment only 45 languages so so if you are a scientist and you want to uh, if you're a researcher or if you're a contributor and you want to think okay is it really true uh, multilingual yes there are, it is it tends to be but there are a lot there is a lot of work to be done to improve from a particular aspect. Now, next thing that uh, we talked about classes, next thing that we can talk about is about wiki projects. Uh, so what is wiki projects? So wiki projects is something that helps you to uh, describe uh, uh, something, some entity, for example. Uh, for example, you want to describe a programming language, you want to describe uh, language you do not know what properties you want to use you do not know so you want some sort of help from people so there is a column here if you go down if you say wiki projects you will see all those uh, projects that have been created maybe uh, we can try on one of them periodicals uh, I hope there are so if you say this periodicals you don't you want to write uh, describe a periodical no problem, there are people who have uh, helped, have explained how to describe a periodical. So you have, you can find this periodical, you say, they said if you want to describe a peri periodical, you have to specify, use the item P31, you have to specify newspaper, you have to specify if it's a magazine or if it's a scientific journal, you could use these of them. You need to have a ISN, ISSN number uh, and the identifier, the title the place of publication, the publisher, the language of the work, the editor, etc. So you have this type of information. But in case of, once again, we want to know about uh, these things from a perspective of uh, translation. So we were here, we are having 136 properties for this project. And we can, or if you go down, we can also know the current translation statistics of all these projects. 136 properties on this page. So you have got the translated labels, you've got the translated description, you have got a translated idea. It is, and you, if you want, you could also verify every time with this particular term. So this is also one way to understand how to describe a property, uh, sorry, how to describe a particular entity. So projects, wiki projects play a very important role uh, in identifying these properties, people discuss, people suggest, they add uh, things on these data models. And uh, if you have a doubt, you could search on these um, uh, projects to understand how to describe. Okay, so we just we have seen uh, there is a limited. I would I would not say it's a perfect one. I'm a bit uh, sad that it's not. Uh, um, so good, it takes a lot of time, and so I'm not so proud to uh, show this particular work. But you have a possibility to search uh, projects, or you can also say, I want to know about properties. It's a bit slow because it tries to, as I said, this everything is brought in real time. Uh, so it tries to make a complex query. Uh, if, if, you, if, you can, if you can help uh, 
me you could uh, improve this property but uh, as i said i maybe we'll get some response after some time so there is a possibility so you could see so you, i said wikipedia uh, sorry wiki uh, search wiki projects i searched uh, museums and i got all these uh, interesting uh, works uh, which are working on museums so you could uh, click on these projects and understand uh, what uh, how could you how you could describe these projects so this is one way uh, to uh, and just to describe, uh, find projects related to your uh, work. But again, as I say, it's not perfect, it's slow, but if you can help uh, in improving this uh, uh, speed, please, uh, I, would, I will be glad. Now I come uh, to the final, the main interface. So if you see, I clicked on the home page and I am on this particular page and I will click on the first, uh, uh, sorry, this point. You could also click on the individual ones, but I will like I would like to show you the overall translation statistics at this point of time. So let us see what is the current statistics at this time. So we have got the current on translated label, translated description, and translated alias. Remember, we have got eight, nine, one, seven properties. We have already seen that all those have been translated in English, in Dutch. It's two have not been translated in French. Eight thousand three hundred ninety-one have been translated, uh, and yes, you could. So we have just color coded. I have made seven colors to distinguish between the level of uh, translation. So you could uh, find out the number of languages here. So you could see like it's very interesting to see the top ten, uh, and also see the number of language uh, properties that have been translated. These uh, languages. So, if you take the Polish language, you have got 4,165, whereas in English it's 8,970. You could also check for the description here in case of EN, EN and Korean. So, descriptions are quite less. We, we also see them here. Translated alias, of course, you have got a lot of translated aliases. You could have multiple uh, aliases for one property. That's why the number is higher than the count of properties. This is one, one way to look at. So next thing that, uh, so, so anytime you want to verify, please go ahead, uh, take this, click this URL and run this query. You can get it, download it. And if you want to share it with any, uh, with your community, language community, go ahead, please uh, share this your query, uh, query response to with your community. So this is another idea of uh, multilingual description. Uh, now I would like to show something which is uh, interesting, is to compare languages. I would like to compare three languages, English, French, and Spanish. So I clicked on compare, and I will see how different languages paired with each other. English is 8917, 8391, Spanish 4739, uh, 38. You have got the descriptions here. 8831, 6818, and 31227. So you have also this possibility to, uh, if you want, you could uh, take this URL, share it with people. At any point of time, you will get the correct answer, uh, the recent uh, statistics that can be shared. And this is interesting. Okay, now I am coming to the uh, uh, final and interesting part. It's the translation part. Uh, why translation path is interesting. So for this work, what we were, so this is the third part. This is about uh, analyzing how people are translating. So imagine you are in a multilingual world. Okay, we'll speak multiple languages or people are bilingual. So they need to speak at least the languages that have been translated before in the property. As I remember that we discussed that items are, uh, properties are special because they cannot be automatically they need at least a human intervention. So when you translate, you need to trans check the existing languages. So maybe it has been translated in English. So in that case, I if I speak English and my own local language, I can, I could translate in my local language. But if I have not, if I do not speak any of the previous languages, I will wait till the language which I speak has been translated to, which I can understand translate in my local language. So this is something that we need to understand. This is uh, a point that uh, people have studied on Wikipedia, how 
information flows in different language communities. People have done that, which language, have, uh, on which language a particular article was created and then on which language it was translated and so on, the flow of information. But in properties, this could be interesting. There are, as I said, by, there is no influence of both. So you could uh, see how things uh, come up in these languages. We have got some results later that we will discuss. So where, how can I get that? So I will click on one of the properties. Let me take 166 property, but I will not go on 166. I will go on the popular one, 856, which, is bit, which will be a bit slow because it will fetch a lot of information. And I will open the first translation path. And in the meantime, I will explain what we are trying to do. So as we have seen for every property, we have got label, we have got description, we have got alias. So we have got label, description, and aliases. And we have also got a timeline, time here. So it means on 2013, for this property P17, the English label was added. On 2013, the same day at the same time, our Italian label was added, the same time, same time French label was added. And at this, at the same time, the I think Chinese language was added. So we have got four la la labels. Oh, sorry, sorry, all these labels that were added for P17 on 2013, etc. So we have got this information. If it's a description, we see the first description for this language was added on 2013 uh, to four uh, at this point of time. We have got this description, and for 856, we can also do the same. We know in case of uh, 8.5 is the official website pro property. Three languages were used and they were, add, they were added here. And then we added the English description and then the Portuguese description. So it means there could be an influence of English to Portuguese. So people, the person may speak this, the person who speaks Spanish may have been influenced by English and Portuguese to translate to this property or may have inferred from the use of the property. Uh, that's one way. Okay. Same thing we could check here. Why this is in interesting? People could do vandalisms. People could remove labels. So I have, so this is P17. Somebody decided to remove the English label. And this is on 2017-0708. People decide, somebody decided to remove the label. So we could verify what happened. We could click on this and we see that label, English label has been defined, uh, has, been, has been deleted. So that's why it has been marked as EN. Uh, sorry, uh, as, as red, uh, just before I forgot to mention, when you add something, it is blue. When you update something, it's light blue. And when you remove something, it is red. So here we see this is, uh, we could check, we could quickly see on which date some vandalism has occurred, or maybe some errors possibly, we do not know. Uh, sorry, here, 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 for example, this is very interesting case. What happened here, if you see, there are, somebody has done a lot of big vandalism. They have decided to remove all these layers, so all these aliases, so all these labels, English label, French label, Spanish label, description, everything has been removed for the property P856. So that means people could not understand what is P856. Uh, this has been done on 2014. So these things can come out thanks to this type of uh, results. So I got my results. It takes time, as I said, you could see this is for P856. This is the thing that I was talking about. Uh, and you could see somebody again did something on 2015. Here again, we see some people have done some sort of uh, removals. And here again, and you could, and let's go some thing to the latest part. Here we have got somebody again has removed it just yesterday, no, 23 May, sorry. And somebody has added it back. So we have this coming back on the Portuguese uh, Wikidata. So this is very interesting. So if you want to detect vandalism, if you want to see something about your language and the properties that are very important in your language, you could monitor these things. You could see what has happened in the, in the, in, for, on these particular properties. Uh, finally, one thing that I also want to show you is the visualization part. What is visualization part? So what, is visualization path. So you have got, oh, sorry, you have got all those languages that have been translated. Now you would like to see, uh, you want to understand how languages are linked to each other from which language to which language, the flow 
uh, things flowed. We have this got uh, things, the links, for example, from English to French and French to Dutch, etc. So you could try to find out uh, what happened on a particular uh, item, for sorry, particular property, like for example, eight five six. What happened? You could verify with these type of images. So this is a visualization part. Again, what I used is I used this. Uh, the advanced thing, the ad visualization. This is the normal part. This is the visualization part. And you have got this particular visualization here. Sorry, I'm sorry, here, this one. You could also try, let's try with, the, with something recent, 8561. So you see French, French, not that, Canada, uh, Canada, no, sorry, in Turkish. So you see French to Dutch, Dutch to Canada, uh, Canada. And Catalan to Turkish. I hope the CH stands for Catalan uh, and Turkish. So you have got this way of information how things have are visualized. Uh, but as things get changed, uh, you may have got a lot, you may get a lot of deletions, additions coming back and uh, going again and again. So this could happen. So, uh, old, pro very old properties, check on very old properties. Take, it takes some time because the data is coming at the real time, but you will get. So this is about visualization of the data properties and there is nothing magic about it. It has, it has used this data, the historicity. You could see somebody has written added SI label. So somebody has added a label here. Somebody has added alias is in Malay language and English uh, alias, British English alias. So this has been used to obtain this data at in real time. If you want to know it in detail, just uh, would like to say this is label. If if you check the comments, you could, if you see in the comment, you have this set, you could know that there has been a label has been added. There has been a label that has been set or a label has been removed. This has, this is used to create uh, this particular interface. You could build real time tools using this idea. But uh, the problem is uh, sometimes you may have cases that people add multiple, especially at the time of creation, people add multiple uh, edits in a single, ed sorry, multiple languages in a single edit. Sometimes it is very difficult to detect this with this type of labels. I have seen some recent changes where people have done uh, added support to uh, detect such multiple language edits. Uh, but when uh, I initially prepared, there was, there was no such support. Okay, so this has been used to collect the data. So we studied, we decided to download all the historicity to understand how languages are work together on Wikidata. So what we have got a data sets which is publicly available. You could, uh, I will show you the link at the end of my presentation. Uh, this data set was, has four columns, the timestamp, the property number, the language that was uh, added, and the type, for example, if a label was added on this date, we have English label, we have got English description, we have got English, uh, uh, okay, sorry, the uh, German label that has been added, Portuguese label, et cetera, et cetera. So that is uh, something that we could, we have studied, sorry. And here, uh, once we have collected all this data, we decided to look at them at, a, so this is not part of the WD prop, this is more of a bigger analysis, we decided to download all the historicity of translation of properties to understand how things work. And what we see is that for 4,000 languages, we have at least 20, langu uh, 20 languages that uh, have been translated. So 4,000 properties, we have 20 languages that have been translated. There are certain properties that have been translated up to uh, 100 and around 160 languages. This is interesting. Remember 360, uh, this is halfway. Uh, 310 sorry this is at least halfway so we have got some properties that have been translated in uh in a, to a large very large extent so this is uh in, this is very important if you want to understand uh how the multilingual aspects of uh, uh, the multilinguality of wiki data from a single website so when we did this analysis it is uh, we worked on 6347 remember right now we have 8900 and 17 properties as we have seen there are mean number of properties is 21 languages at least 21 languages uh, sorry properties have at least 21 la uh, language uh, translations for labels 20 uh, as a standard deviation 
there is at least one the minimum number of languages is in, i think it should be english and so, so you have at least at the time of uh, analysis there was a property with at least one uh, translation and the max as we have already seen there is there are some properties which have been translated 140 154 in 154 uh, languages so now what we want to do is to compare combine things so let's say we have one language so english has got 6347 it's a single language arabic has got 6338 uh, translation for properties dutch 36306 etc now we decide to co combine so let's say english and some other language what happens if there are combinations of language so we see that arabic and ukrainian together they have got 6259 languages so so somebody speaks this language, somebody who are involved. We also see 5,923 for French and Arabic. I think this is, uh, is, is, is um, this could be understood because a lot of um, people uh, uh, in uh, Arabic speaking countries do speak French. So I think we can understand this type of relation between them. Uh, French and Ukraine, I do not know. Uh, Arabic, Catalan, I think. Catalan, UK. So there are sort of combinations that we have found. And you could see there to, how they are together, the number of times they are together. So let's try with four language combinations. So what we see here is English, Dutch, Arabic, and Ukrainian are present together at 6,257 times. Then we have got the second. And then you could, so you could do such sort of combinations. So what what we are trying to show uh, at this time of time, we were saying, can we propose, like if somebody has seen uh, the translation has been done in Dutch and they belong to one of these languages, can we propose them, okay, this property has been translated, please go ahead and translate. So this is something that we wanted to explore at this point of time with this analysis. Okay, I'm now ending towards the conclusion of my presentation. Uh, it is very important to uh, to, f to work on these uh, properties. One thing is that uh, we have many languages which have got info boxes, uh, and we want to bring those data in the, to into Wikidata, at least. Uh, and for that, we need to know uh, the links between these languages. For example, if I say paradigm, what is the property in the English language? Can I do such sort of mapping? Can I do some sort of automated mapping which could say paradigm is here and this paradigm is linked to the paradigm in the info box of the English info box. So this could be, a, so if I want to bring data from the English Wikidata, English Wikipedia, I could do this, uh, I could write a code for that. But for that, I people even need translations in the uh, local languages, so as to import languages, local uh, data into Wikidata. So this is very important uh, in the in this case, the translation of Wikidata properties. Sorry, here you are. Uh, sorry, here you see that uh, at least right now we are trying to bring uh, uh, data from Wikipedia info boxes to Wikidata. But tomorrow, if everything goes fine, we may have a central. Uh, central store like Wikidata, which will have the latest version, the up-to-date version with the references, everything, which will be then fed to the different language Wikipedia based on the consensus of the individual language committee. So this will be very, very interesting uh, at this point. So this is something that we, uh, has to be thought about in, in, in the case of translation of properties. So regarding some future works, uh, as you have already seen that uh, uh, the search experience is not so good. As I said, it's, uh, has, it brings things uh, in real time, so it makes some complex queries. Um, and uh, the, the, so the results come, do come, but after a certain amount of time. Uh, that's one thing, but there are also possibilities to improve uh, the different queries. Queries can be optimized, some of the queries could be written in a better manner. So if you feel like contributing uh, towards that, please uh, do not hesitate. Uh, you can create an issue or you can suggest a pull or you can make a pull request. It's, it would be nice. You can also visualize right now, you have got this beautiful images coming from uh, this website. And right now we do not have an option to export as SVG. So for example, you want to share it this interesting 
thing on, I don't know, social media and you want to say, oh, this is very nice fig, uh, picture. I would like to share it. Right now we do not have, we just have to take a, a screen capture. It's not so cool. Um, so that is something that I think would be worked. Another thing that you, uh, I would like to work on is also about APIs. Right now, everything is bookmarkable. You could bookmark languages and you could share it, uh, anything. Uh, but also, if we have got a support for downloading this data as a CSV file or as a JSON file, why not? People could uh, say, OK, I want uh, all the languages at this point of time in CSV files for my language community, so please Give me a uh, URL for that. So I would like to add something like format equals CSV or format equals JSON, and people could share, download it easily in, in the, on their machines. So this is one thing that uh, could be a possible future work. And of course, you could also set up some more interesting features. We could change colors. I was using more of the, I was using blue color, but maybe uh, you, uh, if you're an uh, expert in colors, please. Uh, are just a better course. Okay, contribution. So translation, the interface currently is in English, most of the things, that's not good. We, it should be in multiple languages, so that's one thing. Uh, though I've ensured that nothing here, the URLs uh, make use of Wikidata related identifiers, but I still think that there's a lot of scope for making it multilingual, completely multilingual. Uh, documentation, uh, there are there are documents. So this I think this talk it will be interesting. Because this these slides could be interesting, and these are this will be these are uh, will be released by the contributing contributing uh, community and so uh, organizers. And so you will have these slides as a reference to for the documentation. Of course, development if you want to contribute. Here are here is this URL. Here is the source code. And if you want to have some issues, please do not hesitate create an issue here. Some of the work, so this was uh, the data that we were trying for the a bigger analysis was done by one of uh, the students at, 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 at my, my engineering school. So Thibaut Shamar, this was done and this data is publicly available and search this data. Uh, these are some of the interesting works which are also working on the multilingual aspects of Wikidata, uh, the collaborative aspects of Wikidata. Uh, uh, Thomas work on uh, property label stability is something that we said that people, if the people vandalizes labels, what happens? So this is very important. So Thomas uh, and Tenon's work is interesting. In this case, uh, they have studied on uh, uh, property label stability. And some works, some of these works have been previously published. This work can be cited here as well. And some of the, in, this, this uh, influence, this particular interesting figure was, has some influence from Notablia, which is a work by Ta, Danny Toro, Toro, Taro, Taro, Taro And uh, this is interesting as well. So, and we have a couple of uh, minutes and please do not hesitate to ask questions. Si vous avez des questions en français, n'hésitez pas à me poser en français, c'est pas un problème. Thank you, thank you so much, John. So it was very, it's an impressive work. It's, uh, it was very interesting. Yeah, thank uh, you very much. I believe we have times for some question. If uh, any of you, I, I'm not sure everyone speaks French here, so. English or French. Oh, somebody has asked about data type change. Uh, I, I, so you mean like, uh, I don't think, oh yes, one pro possible problem I see one question. Uh, it was a long time ago. Yeah, I, but I think it's it is an uh, interesting thing. I think uh, we could have, um, so you cannot just simply change the data type. So normally one case, one possibility for a property deletion is when we decide to change the data type. So in that case, we cannot use the old ones and this is problematic. Uh, you cannot simply change the item to a URL or URL to a string. So uh, this is a, a problem there. So you have, if you have got data time change, you need to remove, uh, have to delete the problem. I guess what, what would be a nice thing too would be to use this tool to identify the translations that are the most, uh, uh, the most missing in, uh, in, uh, in the, inside the properties. So, 
maybe it would it would be nice to have a specific uh, well um, specific applications that use uh, your tool and that uh, also enables to update uh, translation in real time yes yes that would be that would be very nice like uh, something that uh, is could be interesting is to see the work which uh, i was saying like if we know it's combinations of work combinations of languages mm -hmm. if it is possible that the person uh, the language has been translated and the user says i am in the french language please suggest tell me the properties that i could mm -hmm. translate mm -hmm. this is yes i i this is very point taken this is nice yeah. I see you have a, a list, already a list of uh, improvements, possible improvements. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't yeah. surprised, but uh, well, I, I see many, many things you could do with this tool. Uh, I see also, uh, well, everything you can do to analyze uh, links, well, the relations between uh, different languages within uh, Wikipedia. I'm sure many studies have been conducted on this but uh, this tool would be very useful for people but, that yeah. also um, study the uh, i mean the like the, the relation between uh, linguistic communities yes yes what community yes. and where it comes from and etc yes uh, I have. I do not have one. Uh, inter uh, one I had a slide where uh, we have seen a translation between two languages and mm -hmm. it was surprising there was like a translation always going between these two languages and it was surprising because you would see ah yes there is a contact i didn't i didn't speak those languages don't speak those languages but when i checked their language roots i found that those two com languages were be belong to the same language family like for mm -hmm. example the french yeah languages. so this is this could also be found out from this yeah it's very nice so we don't have much time left. I, I don't want to. To uh, I, I'm not sure if anyone wants to ask a question or comment or say anything because we are, we have to. Yeah, well, we have got just two more minutes. Anyway, the, no, it's not a problem. You, you don't hesitate if you have got some issue when you are running this. Mm -hmm. Please go ahead and. Uh, uh, create an issue or you could also contact me on the card yeah. also probably i'll also uh, maybe you can send or oh, i'll do it send uh, your uh, your document to oh yes uh, yeah. to adelaide uh, because uh, i think I, i'm not sure how much you interacted with the uh, wiki wikidata and wikipedia community uh, 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 yeah I, I i actually i'm I would say I'm an active contributor, and I would also say I uh, have been attending almost all the important conferences of Wikidata and Wikimedia Hackathon. So I'm actually working closely with the community, I, especially on, especially the Wikidata community. And did you did you ever think about integrating your software into some parts, maybe some some analysis uh, inside the the Wikimedia itself, so that they can use it? Uh, internally i mean one thing that was suggested was uh, similar to the comment that you made uh, how could we use uh, how could we bring together the language communities so that uh, we could suggest uh, property translations uh -huh. this was one of the suggestions that i i got a couple of years before of course, I have got limited time for that. <laughs> yes, yeah, this is uh, yes. That, that is uh, something like you have got the interface, and when somebody is connected, you see a suggestion. This property has been translated. Please translate in this language. Hmm. Something like that. Yeah, that would be very nice. That's well. It's too short to discuss <laughs> longer. So, uh, thank you very much, John. Uh, thank you. Thanks to the contributing team for giving me this opportunity it was a, a great uh, opportunity for me to talk about this work and also interact with the you're welcome guys thank you bye you're welcome so to everyone now uh, we'll move to the conclusion zoom so i'll okay. have to close this one and i'll just yes, yes, thank you. i'll just uh, send uh, in case you don't uh, find it the other link to the zoom to yes please event. Yeah. Thank you again, John, and uh, we'll meet in the other room. And uh, yeah, thank you, thank you very much.